Okay guys, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to basically be making our collage materials. You're gonna be using 33.333, okay. I'll just say a third, Miss Braun. A third color pencils, a third watercolor, and a third magazine for your wonderful, wonderful collage. Um, what I like to do, because I am a list person, is on the back of my paper, I actually am gonna write down like what colors I need, kinda to just know what I need to tackle, and know what I need to make. So I know that I need um, blues. I need some dark blues. I need some light blues. And in the water, I need some sort of like turquoise teals. Uh, I know that I need a lot of warm colors. So I know I need yellow orange, maybe a dash of red, although this sunset is a lot more red, so I'm gonna put red dash pink. And I see quite a bit of purple. And then I need some white down here. Now, could I get ultra, ultra, spe ultra specific and be like, oh, look at the lavender here, and look at the red orange here? Of course. But remember, we're collaging with pieces that are gonna be about the size of your thumb. So you don't wanna to have to get super, super, super specific. And when you do a purple area, like this area over here, here, maybe you do throw in some lavender or some light purple, some dark purple, and kind of make it a combination. We don't have to necessarily like exactly match every single thing like it's a paint swatch or something like that. Kind of get the general idea of what we're doing here. We're not creating a painting, we're creating a collage, okay. Now that I have my list of what I need to create, I need to find these resources. So the first resource that you're gonna use is magazines. So um, I actually don't have magazines at the house, but what I do have are Black Friday sales and coupons. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look through these and I'm gonna find any of these colors and put them in a pile. Um, I wanna have a probably a good size pile. I'd say probably like the size of the palm of my hand. Um, we really are only covering a you know nine inch by six inch piece of paper. So if I do that three times, you know the size of my hand, that's about what I need of of magazine, of watercolor, and of colored pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of these pieces. And I'm not gonna cut like little specific pieces. I'm just gonna cut what I see. I can tear it or cut it later. Okay, so now I have actually more than a handful of magazine clippings. I'm gonna move on to my next mixed media that I'm gathering, which is going to be colored pencil. So with colored pencil, you can use drawing paper, you can use copy paper, you can use whatever you want to draw on. You can also use your paperback books. This makes like a really cool texture to tear and it has the added text. So like if you paint 
or excuse me, if you color with red, it would be look really cool because you have like a darker, a darkness to the red too. So a way to up your techniques for the watercolor and color pencil, meaning to add to your difficulty is just show more techniques. You guys know plenty of uh, color pencil techniques that we learned in the value and color unit and you also know a lot of watercolor techniques. So if you show more of those techniques off, you're automatically upping your difficulty because instead of using just a solid color, you're showing that you can blend, you're showing that you can use directional strokes, that you can do scumbling, that you can do stippling. Um, so the more techniques you show, the higher difficulty you're gonna do. So just like the magazine, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna use my color pencils in my mischief managed mug and I'm just gonna color different areas. I'm not trying to recreate my picture. I'm basically creating a kind of a swatch, again, this is about the size of my hand, of a variety of colors that I can later cut or tear. Okay, let's do some blues. So I am really happy with the way that both of these looks. Again, I am not trying to make a sunset here. I have colors overlapping, I have colors mixing, I have colors blending. I'm just using my colored list that I made and I'm making little sections of color that I can later tear or later cut to make a collage. So I'm gonna put these to the side and I'm going to get out my favorite, my watercolor. Now, what's really cool about watercolor with collage is because we're gonna be cutting it up or tearing it, you don't have to use watercolor paper. So I'm just using um, regular uh, drawing paper that I actually have cut in half because I don't want the colors to mix together, the warm colors and the cool colors. And then I'm just using my paperback book um, pages. And I'm just gonna do the same thing that I've been doing. I'm going to be making these colors that are on this list. I am gonna move this list just so it doesn't accidentally get water because that is my nice collage paper. So I'm gonna put it up where I can see it, but you guys can't see it. <laughs> so again, just like the colored pencil, how I really experimented with hatching, directional strokes, some scumbling, some layering, some blending, show off your knowledge of different watercolor techniques. So wet on dry, wet on wet, um, using a paper towel, doing a graded wash, uh, doing things like dry brushing, and the more you experiment and you have fun with it, the really, the way cooler your collage is gonna look.
so now I have a super wide collection of materials that I can use to collage with, but they all reference my original landscape sunset image. So I'm gonna wait for my watercolors to dry, which will probably take like 30 minutes to an hour. And then I can start my collaging process because I want to make sure all my materials are ready before I start to collage because I want to be able to pick from from magazine, from watercolor, from colored pencil to get that one third, one third, one third ratio. Great work.